All right, good morning, YouTube. Uh, today's August uh, 22nd of 2023. Um, just wanted to do an overview of this car that I've worked on for my customer slash buddy, uh, Drew, over the years here. Uh, just did a bunch of upgrades, so not our typical run-of-the-mill stuff, but we wanted to do something a little bit different on this one. So I just figured I'd uh, show it off real quick before it goes home. Um, this car has a RPM <clears throat> Weller turbo kit, still a 2560 Garrett turbo. Uh, we did a MoTeC on this thing and a fuel system last year, um, but it's always kind of suffered uh, overheating issues. So it does have a CBR radiator in the front uh, with an upgraded fan, but at the sand dunes with big paddles on it, it, it uh, you know, over 15, 20 minutes into the ride, this thing was starting to get warm on them. So we battled that a little bit at the end of the season last year. Um, just decided to change some of this stuff. I mean, we're gradually working our way up to probably doing a turbo and uh, some bigger power on this build. You know, obviously it needs a rear differential too at that point, but um, <clears throat> I got another video. I think I put up another video of the fuel system. Anyway, M130, John Reed Motec. Uh, this has got an RPM fuel rail and it's got a four innovations regulator you know we had originally made all this stuff fit underneath the bed when he had a bed um 1700 cc injectors like it is ready for making some power uh we did do a shimless bucket shim in bucket conversion on this cylinder head for him um last year also uh but anyway for what we've done now um first thing is we did our water to air intercooler the reason we did that obviously is a, a future upgradable item you know when he does put more power to this thing this rpm kit used to have an intercooler right here uh, vertically basically where this radiator sits now so we got rid of that did our water to air and i'm outside in the sun so i'm not sure how good this is going to come out but anyway this is our intercooler it uses the billet uh, output flange there with the internal o-ring and that's attached kind of to the frame. I don't know if you can see it, if it's gonna come out in this video. Um, now you can't see anything in all, all the stuff in here. Anyway, there's a bracket to the frame somewhere in there. <laughs> I can't even see what I'm taping. Uh, that attaches that. So then, you know, basically you have a intercooler solid mounted to the chassis. You know, you get a little bit of flex from the rubber hoses on the cylinder head and you get you know some variants with the o-rings on the throttle inputs so this fully captures the throttle bodies without the addition of any external brackets which is kind of nice um the other thing is is you know when you have this you got all this room underneath to get to your thermostat or you know whatever else you need and you still have access top of the cylinder head for your spark plugs and you know you're basically putting this intercooler over out of the way not in a hot area it's not over the top of the motor or it's baking with engine heat so um originally did one of these on my car several years ago uh, this is still the same intercooler I'm running on our car uh, done 500 wheel with it so it's a 750 horsepower garrett water to air core you know with our air boxes and our billet and output plenum um did this jeep radiator so i purchased this radiator uh off of amazon i don't remember the exact brand ozark cooling or something anyway the like the size and the layout of it the radiator was like i want to say under 250 bucks for the kit with a fan shroud and fans um, I did not like the inch and a half inlet and outlet and all the extra stuff. It had a transmission cooler and some things on it that we didn't need. So I just went ahead and cut these tanks off all the way, both sides, and uh, made our own tanks. So now we got our one inch uh, hot water return at the top over here. We got our one inch cold water to the pump uh, on the outlet side of the radiator and then changed over to the import sized radiator cap. Um, 
you know, made these weld bungs here uh, to mount our coolant bottle. This is our basically our same bottle we sell for our 2019 and newer car. Um, this one I just uh, changed the brackets and changed kind of the position of the ports, but overall the same dimensions. You know, it's been working really good on the other cars, so just went and did what we know works good there, and it cleans it up. I mean, you could buy a there's like a $20 or $30 uh, coolant catch can you can get on Amazon that looks okay, but we wanted to do something kind of custom. Um, another thing we did on this instead of rubber hoses, you know, I made hard pipes. So that one is the hot water out from the thermostat. So it comes out, that's the factory hose. I just turned it and cut it. So that pipe runs along there up. It's got a mounting bracket and then up to the inlet of the radiator. Did a similar thing on this side, comes out the bottom and comes down, attaches to the frame and then runs over to the factory uh, water pump inlet hose. We just shortened it a little bit. Um, custom charge pipe, you know, coming from his RPM turbo over to the intercooler. And to mount this thing, I made a crossbar that straps onto the chassis, pretty similar to what RPM used to use for their intercooler. Um, that's got some polyurethane bushings in it. And these two posts on the bottom of this radiator were already there as part of the Jeep uh, factory installation, I'm assuming. And I machined a couple more, a little billet uh, stanchions to weld onto the top. And you know, we made this bracket. It's also got the polyurethane in it that just clamps to the frame. So you can see this radiator is like pretty close to the passenger compartment. The reason we did that is he wants to keep all this area open for his cargo box. Um, so there's still room for the cargo box if he goes on a trail ride or whatever. Um, what else? In order to do this, to put this radiator in this position, to get it centered on the chassis, you know, we're in front of this up right here for the oil tank. So we're right in between basically those two factory uprights. So normally the tank would attach from there to there. Uh, I did have to space this out about two and three quarter inches. So I made some spacers for the top and just a little standoff strap for the bottom. And then, you know, I just cut these steel pipes and bead rolled them and we put, you know, an extra little length of hose in there to uh, extend those two oil lines. The factory oil lines do fit with the intercooler, you know, factory oil tank, factory oil lines fit around this intercooler without any modification. So this one is just pushed outwards um, to clear the radiator, which it does. And it fits in there nice. So pretty happy with this. We're going to go put it back on the dyno and just run it again and get it all ready for uh, this upcoming season. So maybe in a year or two, we'll take this motor back apart, check it out, make sure everything's healthy, maybe put new bearings in it and re-ring it or whatever we need to do as a basic overhaul and then uh, hang a big turbo on here and see what we can do for some power. So to be continued. Thanks guys. Bye.